Good evening. This is Monday, September 22nd, 43 days until the 2008 presidential election. There is a man running for president tonight who actually believes right now that deregulation has been a great thing for the U.S. economy. He has surrounded himself with lobbyists who made millions pushing for the regulatory changes that facilitated the current crisis. And he thinks that deregulation of the banking industry has been so great, we should do exactly the same thing with, make that two, health care. Naturally, his campaign today conducted a conference call to announce that the New York Times can no longer be considered a news organization. And when Politico.com chronicled the factual errors the campaign made during that conference call, the campaign then declared that the Politico writer is, quote, in the tank. Our fifth story in the countdown, the political implosion of John McCain. Whatever the senator is saying now, and he has taken at least two sides on this issue today alone, the Republican nominee having showed his hand in the current issue of Contingencies, the magazine of the actuarial profession. In an article that has his name on the byline, quoting from it, Opening up the health insurance market to more vigorous nationwide competition, as we have done over the last decade in banking, would provide more choices of innovative products less burdened by the worst excesses of state-based regulation. The McCain campaign claiming that the senator was referring only to the regulatory change that allowed banks to operate across state lines, not banking deregulation at large. But since the what-he-meant-to-say candidate does not specify what he really meant in the article, we'll rely instead on McCain's anti-regulatory vote voting record, about which the Republican nominee telling Scott Pelley of 60 Minutes he has no regrets. In 1999, you were one of the senators who helped pass deregulation mm -hmm. of Wall Street. Do you regret that now? No, I think the deregulation was probably helpful to the growth of our economy. And guess who else made light reading of the McCain health care deregulation article over the weekend? Well, the Obama campaign, up with a new ad today to prove it. We've seen what Bush McCain policies have done to our economy. Now John McCain wants to do the same to our health care. McCain just published an article praising Wall Street deregulation, said he'd reduce oversight of the health insurance industry too, just as we have done over the last decade in banking, increasing costs and threatening coverage, a prescription for disaster. John McCain, a risk we just can't afford to take. Time now to call on our own Jonathan Alter, also, of course, senior editor at Newsweek magazine. Good evening, John. Hi, Keith. Uh, if the McCain campaign thought it might be able to uh, run away from or at least distance itself slightly from his re record on deregulation, the timing and the publication of this particular actuarial Bible magazine... Did that blow that for them completely? <laughs> this is what is so great about politics is, you know, this, this election may be determined by a magazine that is, is perfect for insomniacs <laughs> that nobody actually reads. Um, but it, it, what it does is it confirms uh, where he has been all of these years. You know, he said that that 1999 uh, bill that was written by his close friend and would-be Treasury Secretary Phil Graham, the man who he thought should be President of the United States in 1996, uh, that, that that helped the economy. It didn't help the economy. The, the economy started to decline in 2000, the following year. Uh, it was after the big years uh, on Wall Street. All that it did was turn, it, turn the big casino into an even bigger casino in a very, very unhealthy way. There is no record of him voting for regulation, uh, increased regulation, going all the way back to the early 80s when he came to Congress. He redeemed himself slightly in 2005 by wanting uh, more oversight uh, uh, of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, but only slightly. And as far as uh, the, the, the basic risks that were assumed by, by Wall Street, he was always moving in the other direction. So for him to now claim uh, that he's really been uh, a, a regulator and in favor of regulation. He's trying to confuse us, Keith, mm -hmm. on two words, reformer and regulator. He thinks that if he says reformer enough, people will believe that he also uh, uh, had well, faith in regulation. Well, they reformed yeah. the, the, the rules as they were and made them much more easy for people to, to play uh, Wild West out there. That, they, that, that, that is reform, like Napoleon had yeah, reform. It's even worse than that, because you remember the Keating Five scandal that he was a part of, which, by the way... Uh, it's crazy, but it, there's been very little about it in the press uh, in, the, in the last few weeks. And McCain thinks he's getting a hard time. He's really getting a free ride on the fact that he was in the middle of the last great financial scandal in our country. But his reaction to that, you would have thought, would have been more regulation of the financial uh, services industry. Instead, he moved forward on campaign finance reform after the, being caught in that scandal, but did nothing, nothing to try to prevent another 
uh, savings and loan crisis from happening down the road. He was missing in action when it came to even learning the basic lessons of a scandal that he said uh, taught him all kinds of things that he would never forget. Let me ask you something that, uh, that is tangential to this uh, in the time we have left. Uh, the, the conference call with the New York Times, which they said or the conference call about the New York Times, which is said the Times is no longer a journalistic organization by any journalistic standard. They're now, now the New York Times is on the S list with us and everybody else. Politico.com came back and listed the factual errors that they made in this, uh, in this conference call. So now the claim was, well, now Politico is also on the list. They're in the tank. Is this still an idea of rallying the base against the media, or is this just panic? Well, uh, I think there is a little bit of, of panic, but it's mostly in the form of just a, an emotional reaction uh, that they can't control. I mean, what, what ends up happening in these campaigns is that the character and personality and temperament of the leader leaks down to all the people below him. So if you have a, a candidate who is erratic, uh, has a temper, likes to lash out, um, you're going to see that on the part of his his people as well. It's it's just uh, a natural thing, and it's also just really trying to not just work the refs yeah. the way they do in basketball, but actually get on the court and push push the refs, hoping that their bosses will go, oh, well, you know, we don't want to get in trouble with the guy who might be president, so we'll move in the other direction and go easier on him. I don't think it's going to work in this case. No, because there's always more refs. Yeah, right. John Alter of MSNBC and Newsweek, as always. Thanks for coming in. John. Thanks, Keith.